But some of the wiser merchants knew that there were fresh problems to be faced. Mother! Mother! It's the good hope from Trinidad. She's rounding hot rope and she's softly child. On my word, all Bristol will hear you. Well then, go and tell your father. Tap on the door, mind. Well, my boy? I'm sorry, Father. I... It's the good hope coming in, Father. Please, sir, will you take me aboard, sir? We'll see. Yes, but to dig two miles or more of new channel for the Avon, that's a formidable enterprise. Surely. But consider, my friend, would you lose all our trade to these Liverpool merchants? As I see it, we have no choice but to be bold. This is the proposed course of the new cut. A system of locks here and here will convert the existing river into a floating harbour. That's all very fine. But has anyone thought of the expense, especially in these troubled times? My friend, the expense would be enormous, but somehow the money must be found. Then, as now, the port was the concern of the citizens of Bristol. Today, through the corporation which owns it on their behalf, in those days, through the vigour and ingenuity of the Society of Merchant Venturers. They were men of foresight. The best of them knew that the tidal keys of the Avon and Froome were no longer enough for the ever bigger ships of the Atlantic trade. They thrashed out plan after plan before they finally adopted the brilliant scheme of William Jessop, which gave Bristol its modern shape, transforming what used to be an alarmingly tidal harbour into a dock system of constant depth. Once that harbour was the whole port. Today it is only a section of it, the section known as the city docks. And although these docks are the historic part of the port, thanks to the 18th century planners, they have been able to keep up with the times. And their only limitation is the length of vessel they can handle. From Welsh Becky I've said goodbye to sweetheart wives and friends. And down the marsh we've sailed away to wind through Avon's bends. I've been to sea for twenty years, I've sailed to East and Cape. But now I want to stay in port and a home in Bristol I'll make. So bind me to the bullard, mate, don't lash me to the Jessop's plan turned the old riverbed into the floating harbour by impounding it with locks and diverting the Avon along a man-made bed, the New Cut. Bristol's other river, the Froome, flowed into the floating harbour under the modern city centre. The Froome's bed, too, is man-made. Enterprising Bristolians moved it here in the early Middle Ages, creating Broad Quay, which remained in use to within living memory till the city centre was built. In general, it's the continental and coastwise trade that comes to city docks, while the bulk of longer-range vessels goes to Avonmouth docks, but only because of size. <laughs> 